Let's solve Laplace's equation on the upper half plane. So we're going to take y to be positive, uh, but x can be any value in r. And the uh, values along the x-axis will be given by some boundary condition f. And we're going to add to this the stipulation that we uh, want a bounded solution. OK, so uh, we proceed by taking the Fourier transform. And we're going to take the Fourier transform in the x variable. So y is going to come along for the ride. It'll play the role of t uh, for this play. Uh, so we've got minus c squared u hat plus u hat yy is equal to 0. And our boundary condition comes along u hat xi0 is f hat of xi. All right. And so we can solve this uh, differential equation and find that u hat looks like some function of xi times e to the minus xy plus some other arbitrary function of xi times e to the positive xy. And so now if we use this condition that uh, we want u to be bounded, well, it turns out that uh, u hat unbounded implies that u is unbounded. So if we want u to be unbounded, we better make sure that u hat Sorry, if we want u to be bounded, we better be make sure that u hat is bounded. So let's see. So then we're going to uh, need to kill off the part that grows for any positive value of that variable. So um, we require that a is going to be 0 uh, whenever um, c is negative so that we don't get uh, a blow up on the on the left axis and we're going to require that b is 0 for whenever c is positive so that we don't get a, a blow up on the uh, positive axis so let me draw see if I can draw a picture here of the sort of situation that we're looking at so Suppose we have um, some function a, and we require it to be 0 on the left. And then it can be like whatever the heck it wants. So there's a portrait of a. And simultaneously, we've also got uh, the a is the coefficient of the decaying exponential. OK, so that's what um, we've got for this guy. So here's e to the minus xy for some value of y. OK. Um, then if we multiply these together, the sort of thing that we're looking at is something that's going to be uh, necessarily 0 along here. And then the other part is, well, we're going to multiply the a with the decaying exponential. And I don't know, it's going to look like Ah, maybe that or something. Who knows? Whatever. Okay, so there's there's my artist interpretation of a c e to the minus c y, and then we have the the whole same thing all repeated. Uh, well, not entirely identical, but let me just use this as a, a starting point. So, um, in this situation, it's going to be b that we're looking at. And it's going to be on the, the other side. Um, so we're going to have, uh, let's see, so our b is going to be required to be 0 here. And then it can do whatever it wants. Maybe we'll have something that's just like a linear function. Uh, and then we've got our increasing exponential. Uh, so this was b. And then multiply them together blue and red make purple and we've got 
this over here. So this one's going to be definitely zero on the positive. And then when you multiply those together, maybe you get some thing that looks like that. I don't know, whatever. Um, so the key point is that the solution that, that we found uh, looks like a sum of the A and the B thing. So if I, uh, here, add these together and look at what I get down below, um, I'm, I'm going to get that uh, portion from the, uh, the B and the portion from the A added together. And so this is a really long-winded way of saying that if uh, I take C to be the function which is um, uh, equal to AC when C is um, positive and BC for when C is negative, then um, <coughs> C, C, God, that's a fun one to say, um, is going to be equal to this sum that we had before. So that's, that's supposed to be a visual justification for why I can replace this linear combination of exponentials with this e to the minus absolute value. It's basically just looking at it by cases. Alrighty, okay. So that gets us to the point where we know that u hat cy is going to be some arbitrary function of c. Oh, and that's what this one was here, by the way. That's so this is that's that's c. Okay. Um, e to the minus absolute value c times y. And then by setting um, y equal to 0 to evaluate, on the left side we have our initial condition. And on the right side we have just the c function by itself, because this is e to the 0. So then we know our u hat has the form f hat e to the minus absolute value c y. Great. And now it just remains to take it back across the Fourier transform. So we take the inverse Fourier transform. And we have uxy is going to be the inverse Fourier transform of e to the minus uh, cy convolved with the inverse Fourier transform of f hat, which is f. And so uh, at this point, again, we go and we look to uh, table or an internet or uh, a friend's brain or something and find out that the um, inverse Fourier transform, well, that this e to the minus c absolute value times y is the Fourier transform of y over pi times uh, 1 over x squared plus y squared. And so our solution is uh, the integral, well, y over pi times the integral of um, f of tau d tau over x minus tau squared plus y squared. That's a y. Okay. 